Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. For those of you who haven't seen the show, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us there. Um, we're actually the biggest firm outside of Boston. This is a little that plug for Myrick O'Connell. <laughs> um, and as a result, everybody gets to do what they like. I like doing this. Uh, so I do elder law presentations like at the Senior Center. But this show is not about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. You've all seen them at the Senior Center if you've gone. My friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and their goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're in, if you're in Ashland, you want to be buried here. You don't want to go you know, to your kids in California and blah, 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 because your friends are here. This is your community. And so the purpose of this show is to, is to say, so if you're Frank and Mary living here in Ashland, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about? Um, in order to do that, in order to stay here. And so in order to do that, I needed to find a person who knows a lot of people, and that is my friend Steve Mitchell, who was kind enough, uh, uh, as a, select, in his kind of volunteer hat here, he's not mm -hmm. as a selectman hat, but his volunteer hat, to come on the show and find us all these great guests, and yet again, you found a terrific person. Yep, thanks a lot, Art, and always a pleasure to uh, spend time with you on, on the show, and uh, but uh, we have a great guest today. We have our interim police chief, Vin Alfano, uh, with us today. And, and uh, Vin, if you could uh, talk a little bit about your background. And uh, you've been in, in police work for forever. Forever. And you're a local guy as well. Oh, no, he comes from far away. I heard he came from far away. <laughs> Where was that? that Framingham, the right F, across the F board. word, Framingham. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> a local guy. Uh, so if you can just. Uh, Give us a little uh, background. Sure. Um, my name is Vin Alfano. I'm the interim police chief of the town of Ashland. I grew up in Framingham, just, just down the road. Um, I went to Norwich University, uh, Northville, Vermont. I graduated from there, and then I started working with a, uh, a local company, Prime Computer. I was a security manager for them for 10 years, and I felt that I, I wanted to uh, proceed further into law enforcement, so I took the civil service test, and uh, was hired by the Framingham Police Department. So I ended up uh, with the Framingham Police Department for 20 years. I uh, went through just about every position there, uh, patrol officer, sergeant, lieutenant, and at the time I was offered the uh, chief's position in Bolton, Massachusetts, uh, the town that I, I actually lived in at the time, and I was the chief of police there for 20 years. And uh, I, when I retired from Bolton after, uh, excuse me, 10 years, after, when I retired from Bolton after 10 years, I went back to teaching law enforcement officers, uh, primarily um, training them in all the different uh, aspects of law enforcement. And then I received a call from the town of Ashland that their chief was retiring, and uh, could I help them out? So I came out of retirement, and, and I've been here for about seven, seven, eight weeks now. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say, so this is like his retirement job. This is, That career yeah. just lasted a long time, <laughs> but we just heard. Well, that's right. And, uh, but we're very fortunate to have, have uh, Chief Alfano uh, joining us uh, in Ashland, and uh, I understand that... Uh, that things are going well, so you know, glad to have you. Uh, Thank you. But let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the, the purpose of, of this show is really to, to dig into kind of the issues that seniors uh, are engaged in, and you know, we're we're proud to be a, a community that uh, invests a lot into lending a helping hand to those that need it. So That's let's right. talk a little bit about that. Talk about maybe some of your experiences with. Uh, with those that suffer from Alzheimer's uh, or dementia, and, th and then just some of the challenges that, that you uh, have addressed as, as a law enforcement officer over the years. Sure. Um, seniors and, um, and, and, and those that, that have dementia have always had a very um, open and warm spot in my heart. Uh, throughout my law, law enforcement career, um, when, when there's ever an, an issue, somebody that has dementia is missing or, they, or they're confused or um, they're driving and there's a concern, it always ends up with law enforcement first. Um, yeah, or, the, or, or the classic first responders. We are. We're the truly the, the, the first responders. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's very different for law enforcement officers because they're, they're very attuned to if there's a 911 call, there's an accident, there's a fire. Uh, there's a bad guy that robbed a bank. The officers are very focused. They know exactly what to do. It's very specific. They have their very specific policies and procedures. When, when we cross the line and we're dealing more with, with social issues and medical issues, um, the law enforcement officers almost have to turn a switch 
and they need to deal with those situations in a, in a very different way. That's where their, their compassion comes out, um, their understanding, because many times um, when we're dealing with seniors and those, those with dementia, the families are involved. So the families um, really, a lot of times, don't know what to do, or you know, they've never dealt with that situation, or they've been dealing with the situation for so long that they're crying out for help, they're crying out for assistance. And this is, this is where um, the type of officer that we always look to hire, an officer that has that compassion side, they're not a, a robocop, so to speak, that's where it's, it's, it's very helpful. And the officers really take these, these calls to heart. Um, especially um, when when someone's missing, and I know I, I can't tell you how many calls that I've taken in whatever department I've I've been with throughout my career, where we get a panic-stricken call from a family and saying that you know my mother has dementia and she got out of the house and she's missing, and you know, it's getting cold and it's getting dark. Those those are the calls that, as a police chief, would keep me up at night. Those are the calls that it's it's all hands on deck. And those are the calls where you know every officer is is out there. Officers coming in, volunteering to come in, um, utilizing the resources that we have. For example, uh, search dogs. We have a, we have a canine unit within our department. Um, the dog has excellent search capabilities. Um, the state police are very helpful. Um, other departments in the area with with tracking dogs very helpful. Um, I, I can't tell you how many finds I've been involved with 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 canine units actually finding someone someone that's missing. Um, in, in my own family, we've, we've had um, grandparents that, that had dementia, and we know what it's like to have to you know, keep, it, keep an eye on them or have them, if they're using the stove, be, sure. be very, very careful. Yeah. Um, so it, you've seen it. Yeah, I suppose it, it, that's, it for a fam family member, if you've got a family member, I think it changes that perspective. It, it and really I, and does. And I have to say, it's really exciting to hear, as, as he was describing this, I was saying to myself, I would, I would have thought that folks who go into police, so one of the things, the reasons why you go into the police is to be, catch the bad guys, right? Yeah. And so the notion of actually you know, almost, you know, I don't want to say filtering, but really hiring to have people that obviously have that, but really have that compassionate right. side. But that, great that's description a wonderful thing. of flip, you know, how a police officer has to flip a switch. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. oriented for certain events to occur, and then this where you've got to flip the switch to, and, empathy and compassion for a situation. And, uh, and I have to say, I mean, the police, our police department has been, uh, and particularly uh, Officer Carpusis was involved with our dementia yes. friendly uh, program from the beginning. And uh, as part of our dementia friendly uh, program, we've, we're creating a registry of, of those that suffer uh, and along with a lot of other things, but you know, integral to the, you know, to this whole uh, concept and program is is obviously public safety. And, uh, yes, those th that registry program is is so important to us because when when we get a call at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night and, and a family reports that, that they have a loved one that's missing, if we have a photograph already in our files of, of that person and maybe mm -hmm. a listing of their favorite places, where would they go if if they were wandering? Um, that is so helpful for us because it, it's like a road map to us to help find them because if we don't have that information, we have to go to the family and say, please find a picture right away. We have to get the picture back to the station. We have to make copies. We have to pass the copies out to our officers. Yeah. So if, if we have that information already in hand, um, and it's, it's kept very secure. That's information that's never shared. It's never released to the public. It's, it's for strictly law enforcement right. purposes. And I'm glad you brought up the, the caregivers as well because mm -hmm. there's such a, you know, we talk about the, the, the folks that are, that are suffering from the disease. Right. Uh, and very often, you know, not a recognition of what's happening with the caregivers and, right. and their needs and, and so on. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a complex and... Uh, uh, By the way, could I just ask the chief to, to step back? So for the, for the, demand, for the registry, mm -hmm. so if I'm a person who is a caregiver and, I, and, I'm, and I'm concerned about making sure that, that this person is kind of on your files because yes. for those benefits, 
What do I what do I do? Just I'm contact fine. contact the police department. We're we're open twenty four seven seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and and, a phone, and, is there a particular a phone number other than nine one one? I would call uh, the business if you if you're setting something yeah. up. Yeah. Just contact the station at the uh, yeah. the main number, the business number. Yeah. And you can um, you can let us know what you want. And and actually, it's probably best to meet. We'd actually want to sit down with you, other than just yeah. filling out a form because a lot of right. the things that we like to know are the special concerns um, with with the actual uh, person. And, and again, things like their favorite spots, friends of theirs, where yeah. they may go. Because you, you never know how, how um, these, these cases will present themselves. Um, you know the old saying, it takes a village? It, it, this is a case with, with persons with dementia. It really does take a village. I, I'll give you a very quick example. Um, where I live in the town of Lancaster, um, there's a lot of senior citizens that live on our street that have lived there for, for 40, 50 years. So you're the and, new guy. Yeah, we're the, we're the new guy, my okay. wife and I. And there was a, a wonderful retired gentleman that lived down the street from us. He was in the, in the service because we live very close to Fort Devens, and he was retired. And him and his wife had a little house, and she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, but she had dementia, and every day he would take her by the arm and walk her up and down the street. And we would talk with them when we, we would see them go by, and my wife would stop over and bring her flowers from the garden. And it was, it was just a, a, a nice, warm relationship. One day, um, we were in our, our living room on the ground floor of our house, and uh, our dog, we have a, a chocolate lab, and she's very docile. She was all of a sudden just started running and banging against the windows to the house, and it was getting dark. It was uh, it was about six o'clock at night, and this was in the fall, so it was it was getting cold, and we didn't know what what was up with the dog. So I, I looked out the window, and it was like a scene from a movie. In front of me, right out the window, I saw um, an older woman with long long gray hair, and she had a long hat, and she had a, a broom in her hand, and she was sweeping. And it was, it was our lawn outside. And I said to my wife, there's a, there's a woman out here sweeping on our, our grass. So um, my wife looked out, and she immediately knew who the woman was. She said, that's so-and-so from, from down the street. And, and we, of course, we, we went outside, and we saw her. We said, hi, you know, and used her name. And, and, and we said, what, what are you doing? It's getting dark. It's cold. Why are you in our backyard in the dark? And, and she, I'll never forget this. She looked at my wife, and she said, do you know who I am and where I live? And my wife immediately said, yes, you know, you, we know who you are, and we will take you home. And, and so the two of us took, took her down the street. She lived about maybe four or five houses da down the street. And our street's a dead end, so it's it kind of a rural area. And her husband was running around the driveway frantically, and, uh, frantically looking for her, and he was in his 80s. So you could see the, you know, the horror on his face because he, he discovered she was missing. And he was running around, and I'll never forget the look on his face when he saw us with her in our arm, yeah. taking her down the driveway. Good story. Right. And, That's and it, it can right. happen anytime yeah. Yeah. and anywhere, but that knowledge, that local knowledge right. of just knowing your neighbors found her. Good knowing point. And we, we've talked about yes. this before, Art, yes. about you know, neighbors of, you know, our neighborhoods in Ashland are mixed neighborhoods. We've got uh, seniors living next to millennials and so on. And I think it's so important for all of our residents to just be aware of your senior residents in your, in your, right. your neighborhoods. Right. And, you know, going to kind of like kudos to Ashland in terms of really focusing on this notion of creating a dementia-friendly community and really making everyone aware of kind of like what the signs are so that you can spot somebody and be helpful to somebody who's got dementia and not be afraid of them. Because there's, there's always, you know, sometimes, you know, you see somebody who's acting kind of crazy, you're like, well, I think I'm going to go to the other side of the street. Yeah. But as, 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 as the chief was, was talking about, the, to the extent that if I'm, if I'm suffering memory problems, right, the only way that I can stay in my house, the only way I can possibly stay in my house is if, my, if I can trust my, if I can be safe, right? Yeah. I can trust my neighbors. Sure. If the chief, right. yeah. That's a wonderful thing. That's yeah. a wonderful thing. So let's shift gears a little bit from... And excuse from me, I'll be, I'll be right back. I just sure. take care of so let's shift gears for a little bit from uh, the dementia-friendly uh, discussion. And tenure here, you've been, uh, you know, you've been active at the community center. Yes. You've been engaged with our human services department and, and so on. So speak to that about how you've uh, integrated your, yourself into, that, into our, our pro program. 
my my second day here, um, uh, we have two lieutenants on on our department. Yeah. Um, and I said to them, I said, you know, I, I grew up in the area. I know Ashland very well, but there's so many new things that have that have happened here that that I'm not familiar with. You know, t t take me around. So I had Lieutenant Bowden take me around, who spent a day on one side of town, and Lieutenant Briggs took me to the other side of town. And I'll never forget this, Lieutenant uh, Bowden, who's a resident, he's a longtime a Ashland um, uh, community member. He's very active in the community. He said, we need to go to the community center first. I said, excellent. So he took me up to the community center, and we went all through it, and of course he walked in and everybody knew him. Um, and I was absolutely flabbergasted with the services that were at the community service particular center particularly seniors um, I toured the food pantry which I've, I've never I've seen a lot of food pantries I've never seen one that large in my life it was like going into a BJ's warehouse almost it was amazing the you know how the support from the community and community businesses and area industries there um, and the very engaging with the seniors I saw all kinds of different groups and activities going on and then um, I found out that they had a senior breakfast coming up. Matter of fact, you, you were there. as You were serving. I saw you there. And I've put that, that senior breakfast is marked on my calendar because I've met so many right. people at, at that. Well, I am involved with the, I'm a member of the Ashland Lions. And so we do during, uh, we do take the, the summer off. But during the balance of the year, we have a, a monthly senior breakfast. Costs a dollar. It's a great time, uh, plenty of food, a dollar. It's, it's the it's, bargain of the century for and people. It's, uh, there's plenty of food. We change the menu up every year. I'm, I'm, I'm a sous chef, so uh, uh, I take orders from, from <laughs> our executive chef. <laughs> but, uh, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, you know, our community center is uh, it's active. Um, it it's provides a ton of services. But specific to, to our senior community, um, you know, we have uh, a human services department. I just want to throw out kudos to uh, Jen Ball, our assistant mm -hmm. town manager, Joanne Duffy, our elder services uh, director, Jennifer Wolfing, our, our uh, human S services director, uh, Cara Terrell, who's a social worker involved with the, with the uh, food pantry as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, speak about uh, a little bit how you've integrated yourself into that that umbrella of human services that, uh, that kind of come together to deal with the situation. There, there were so many different different aspects of it. Um, I'll go back to the food pantry. There, there were quite a few staff members were, were in there working that, and it was busy. Every time I've been in there, it's been busy. So it's it's clearly being well used. Um, the the staff was has been so supportive. Uh, for example, we had a fire in in town recently in downtown, and. Um, the fire department did a, a phenomenal job of you know, dealing with that. It was a very serious fire. Our, we were involved from a police standpoint because we didn't know if somebody was still in the building. So our detectives had got involved in trying to track down to make sure all the residents were accounted for. But um, it, it was such an integrated team of town, of town government. You had the water department officials right there. You had um, the DPW. Um, the fire department, um, the auxiliary police were there. The, the the regular police department, my officers were there. Were there doing traffic? Um, all the aspects of town government integrated seamlessly, and I, and I see that through the uh, the services at the community center as well, with transportation, the transportation services that they have. Um, the classes, uh, they had a number of classes that I, I was fortunate enough to, to pop in on and just and watch what they were doing. Um, you know, I'll say it, and I'll say it without conviction. The, the, in Ashland, the, especially the senior community, is very, very well served by town government. Um, it's well supported. It's well served. As a matter of fact, I, I even said a number of times to my uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, who are retired, I'm like, boy, you, you people should move to Ashland because they're <laughs> they're in Framingham now. And I said, I said, you know, the the services that they have for seniors and retirees in Ashland is just is phenomenal. There's so much to do okay. and and the relationships that that have formed like uh, just from all the senior breakfasts I see these the seniors everywhere now I see them on the streets I see them at the senior the senior housing facilities um, and they really know and they, each other. it's a real community it's a function me, of the right? underlying yeah. community but though. it's a real sense of community and here, it's a know? recognition though of, of 
of a lot of the challenges that, that residents face, whether it's dementia, whether it's another form of mental illness, whether it's substance abuse, whether it's hoarding. I mean, it's a host of challenges. And uh, what do people do in, in a time of need? Right. And, you know, so to me, the measure of a community is how do we respond to that? Yeah, and again, I, I can't stress enough that the integration of the town departments. For example, we had a, a, a case with... Um, uh, some seniors and there, w there was some hoarding involved so there was there was the assistance there um, there was there were animals involved that were not cared for properly our animal control officer was directly involved in that our, our court prosecutor and our administrative staff directly involved in that um, in, in trying to get help not not from a, a punitive standpoint but right. you know we're, these are the resources of the town and we're here to we're here to help solve the issue and and they did they got the services needed both for the people for the houses and, and for the animals involved and, and you know it's funny this is really one of the reasons why we do the show you know is so that folks because a lot of folks who are seniors it, that, that tends to be a large constituency of who watches these shows mm -hmm. so that people can see you and see those kinds of other players and put a real name kind of a, a face to right. a person and realize it isn't this big intimidating bureaucracy because I think a lot of times once again the older you get the more you're like oh I don't want to bother anybody you know and I don't get in trouble right yeah but if they know that there's that, that people are looking at it this way it kind of changes your whole feeling That's a good about point, that right? because you know? a lot of people have, it, and you know we, we've probably all have, have have felt this way in the past you know the proverbial town hall yeah concept right but you know, town hall is is all of us here. And uh, right. but right. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad you also mentioned the food pantry because the food pantry very active place. It's bursting at the seams. You know? It is. It really <laughs> is, and we need more space. Uh, um, and you know, there's there's. And where, where's the food pantry? Food pantry is in the basement of the lower floor, not the basement. It's the lower floor of the community center. I can't believe it. All the times I've been there, I've never yeah, been downstairs. Yeah, and it's down, well, <clears throat> make sure I'll, next time, next time, time I go, check I'll it out. But it's. Right? Uh, there is a, uh, it's, it's a small space. Uh, yeah. Typically, it's, it's crammed with, uh, fortunately, it's crammed yeah, with, good, with yeah. needed, needed materials. And, uh, you know, lots of organizations hold food drives on a regular yeah. basis, so try to keep it uh, stocked up. But we need more space. So, yeah, you know, right. some evaluation for, you know, looking at some, some new, a new location, expanded location. Uh, um, Excuse me. Can I ask the chief one one one, one thing? Because I know we're, before we before we go, because yep. it's just a kind of question that more broadly comes to my clients all the mm -hmm. time. There's that whole issue of I want to call elder of of scam, the the scams issue, and right. the and the and the abuse issue. So, if what should people do? I kind of kind of broadly, if I'm a senior, I, you know, whether somebody shows up at the door, somebody calls me, should people who Think there may be a problem, always call the police department? And if so, is there a particular person at the police department that you call? Kind of what do you do? Because I know it's a kind of a, it's a, it's this kind of ongoing, it's like it, it always it is. shows and, up. And, and, and it all comes from all different directions. And sometimes it's a relative, mm -hmm. right? And so you're kind of, once again, you're nervous, oh, do I want to call the government? Blah, blah, blah. Right. But sometimes it's just these calls, or maybe you just get a call and you know you hung up on the person but should they do anything else right. should they report right. that but you it's know it's not just the call i mean the calls yeah. are you know, they seem to be increasing rather than yeah. also the solicitations that go on in neighborhoods and you know i, I think it's concerning to a lot of people to yes. see on you know somebody you don't know walking <laughs> up to your house banging on the door and so on uh, I know they have to be registered or they should be yes, registered yes and they need state licenses right and, they need and all of that but how do we know if they do or they don't? When in doubt, call us. I mean, if you ever want to see a police officer get mad about something, and I, I'm not talking upset, I'm talking mad. It's whenever we see people that try to take advantage of seniors. Um, police officers attack those problems with a passion, uh, myself included. Um, I, I urge all seniors, just be careful when you answer the phone and somebody, uh, you know, slick talking salesperson's on the phone trying to get you to do something. I tell them, be rude. It's the first time in your life you want them to just be rude and hang up. <laughs> that, if you, great... if you know, if it doesn't, because that's true. If, people if it, don't like true. that. They don't like to Pe hang up. People don't like to to be rude, but that's a case where hang up. Um, same thing with with texts and um, and and the uh, the computer generated generated emails. 
Um, there are so many scams out there, and a lot of people don't realize, most of them don't even come from within this country. They come from offshore, overseas. And they really do target seniors because they know seniors may be at a, at a disadvantage. They may not understand something. Um, they, they may be very lonely and they're looking for somebody to talk to. They, they, they really do target seniors. So my, my first suggestion to all the seniors is if you're not sure, if something smells bad to you, call us. Mm -hmm. Call the police station. There's no one, one person you need to ask for. When you call the police station, you'll get the dispatcher. The dispatcher is the clearing house. Yes. They, they channel all the calls to the appropriate people that would need to, to go to that call. And I can't stress enough, you're not bothering us. It's, it's so That's much easier key. to deal with a situation from the start before it turns into a scam or the person loses money. Um, and as far as solicitation, solicitors in the neighborhood, again, call us. Just say, hey, you know, our, we have a pretty small neighborhood. There's a guy walking down the street going door to door. I don't know who he is. Um, can you just check him out? And we do that all the time, every day. And, and, and one of the reasons that's so, when, to me, so I, I, get the, I get calls either from the senior or from mm -hmm. the kids as a lawyer. Oh, so and so, you know, they sent this check, and so what can we do? And the answer is nothing. You can never get this money back. Right. Rip it ever. up, throw it away. Just forget it. You know, same thing, even, even, you know, if there's some friend of yours that you've just kind of written a big check to, mm -hmm. chances are you're never going to get it back. Right. So, as you say, the key is to ha have it. Talk to somebody before it happens. Right. Get some advice before it happens because these are things that are unreversible. And, and the biggest thing that, that I always hear whenever we're investigating a case with scams, especially with the seniors, they're so polite and they were brought up that way gen, gen, and through the generations. And, yeah. and you, you want to have a kindler, gentler society, but there are some times when you know, we want them to call us. They're not bothering us. Absolutely. They're not bothering us. We'd yeah. much rather solve the problem right away. I think away. the most concerning issue, though, with terms of scams or taking advantage of seniors is certainly when it happens, a family member is taking advantage yeah. of, of, a, of a parent or a sibling or whatever. That's almost a show in itself. And that maybe which, which, we'll that which may be do. one of the things we want to do. do. Yep. But I just I wanted yep. to shift gears a little bit because I, I want to spend some time thanking the chief to be here, but I just wanted to make note that this uh, show is happening. It's, it's June the 5th, uh, 2019. We just uh, uh, had our recent uh, town elections. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, our re-elected uh, select board member, Joe Mignani, and our new select board member, Brandy Kinsman, who will be uh, attending her first meeting tonight. So I just wanted to uh, say best wishes to both of them. And Chief, I think it's a pleasure Thank you. getting to know you and having you on the show. And uh, just from what I've observed and learned about you, I think it's just a great fit for our, for our community. Well, thank it, just, you. it just sounds like you're just a real community guy and you're coming into a real community, right? It, it and is. you grew up close by, and that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. So yet, yet again, Steve, hey. another terrific guest. It goes by you, so, so you, quick. You, you just keep hitting right. them. <laughs> thank you very much, Chief. Thank um, you, Art. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.